there are many myths about Jesus. In these programs, we're talking to some experts who can help us get at the facts behind the myths. Yet another myth is that the Bible's accounts of Jesus are full of contradictions. For example, in John's Gospel, Jesus clears out the temple in Jerusalem at the beginning of His public life. In the other Gospels, He does it in the last week of His life. So which is it? And do the differences mean we can't trust the Bible's accounts? Now, some critics have pointed uh, to discrepancies that we observe when we compare uh, the four Gospels, such as in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. You have many times Jesus uh, saying the same thing, and there it is in two of these three Gospels, or maybe in three of them, and yet the wording is not always the same. Or maybe a story is narrated. Jesus does something. He heals someone. And again, we notice some details uh, where there is some variation. So uh, some have objected. Well, what I say to that is we need to know right away that these narrative accounts are not, they're not videotape. Uh, Jesus was not tape recorded. Uh, and so we should not expect then word for word, or nor should we expect an exact chronology. Well, I think it's important to understand that for ancient sometimes that something happened is more important than telling you when it happened. And so sometimes they do relocate events because they're saying things like, this event is a snapshot of what the entire ministry is about, so I'm going to move it forward. Uh, we see one very clear example of this in Luke, uh, in the uh, visit of Jesus to his hometown synagogue. It's in the middle of Mark, it's in the middle of Matthew, but it's right at the beginning of the Galilean ministry in Luke. And what Luke is doing by moving it forward is saying, this is what the Galilean ministry is going to be like. It's like this event, and even though the event came later, and he kind of signals that he's moved it up because the crowd says to Jesus, do hear what you do in Capernaum, and in Luke's gospel, Jesus hasn't been to Capernaum yet. So we even get a little hint that there's been a move made there. I think the same thing happens with the temple cleansing, that the temple cleansing in John has been moved up to show this is the kind of thing that's going to happen in Jesus' ministry. You're going to see him facing this kind of opposition and questioning and doubt all the way through the gospel. And we've taken something and moved it up to show what Jesus' ministry is like rather than being concerned about giving a chronology. Again, because the ancients, for the ancients sometimes, that it happened was more important than giving when it happened. Jesus taught his disciples according to the conventions of his day, and we know what those conventions are. We actually have handbooks from antiquity that describe how uh, a student learns the words of the master, memorizes them, but then paraphrases them, applying them appropriately in different situations. And that's exactly what we see in the Gospels. And so what we have is a portrait of Jesus that emerges that is consistent. We don't have three or four Jesuses. We have one, even though there are different facets of his personality and his teaching that are brought to light by the evangelists. And so I think there's a naive uh, scholarship out there that says, oh, well, if you have a discrepancy and Jesus hasn't said it exactly the same way every time, that's a problem. It is not. I think uh, these discrepancies, and I'd put them in quotation marks, began with Jesus himself, who taught over and over again, and not in the same words. He didn't repeat himself verbatim, time after time, but in a variety of settings, uh, he would adapt his teaching and his language, and this is what his own disciples did too when they wrote the Gospels down some years later. The claim that the Bible's accounts of Jesus are full of contradictions is a myth. The fact is that they were written in line with the historical standards that were used at the time. The order of events wasn't as important as the fact of the events. These accounts aren't as precise as we'd like today, but we can still trust them. Next time, we'll examine whether Jesus ever claimed that he was more than a prophet.